Hey, Chris at A to B here. We uh, thought we hadn't done a story on my project that predates the channel. Um, it's a 1950 Willys pickup truck. Uh, we did find this in Door County. We were on vacation there in 2017. Um, wonderful place to visit if you haven't been there. I highly recommend it. Door County's uh, the little peninsula of Wisconsin that separates Lake Michigan from Green Bay. Um, we were clear up at the end of the peninsula, almost to the end of the road, and coming back, where we come back from the house we rented, this truck was sitting there and we passed it every day, sitting in the grass with a for sale sign. Um, I wasn't looking for a Willys truck when I found it, when we saw it, but I did, uh, we did stop and look at it the last day we were there. So I, uh, I knew enough about them to know that this truck hadn't been damaged in any way it still carried most of its original parts which is extremely unusual for one of these trucks most of them uh, they weren't very powerful so most of them ended up with another kind of motor in them and putting another engine in one of these trucks can is typically done very poorly um, it is a so we ended up going back about three weeks later to go back and get it it's a nine hour drive one way and we made that trip in two days to go back and get it. We were up there one day, picked it up and come back the next. So, um, it is a 1950 Willys truck. Um, it is kind of an oddball because the early 1950 trucks actually looks like a 1949, which is what this truck is. Um, it looks like a 1949 model. Willys was planning to change the front end styling on the fenders and the hood and the grill um, in 1950, but they built out the rest of these trucks with the rest of the parts they had to finish out the run of pieces. You can hear Tori in the background. He's having a good time today. It's a nice fall day, but um, so they built roughly a little less than 4,000 trucks in 1950 that look like this one. Um, because it starts to, it has some 1950 stuff on it and it has some 1949 stuff on it. Um, this hood, uh, this hood ornament uh, is typically broken because the hood latch isn't very good on these trucks. And typically the hood ends up flying up and it actually ends up contacting right there and it usually breaks them right about there. Um, but this is a 1949 piece. Um, a 1950 truck would not have had one like this. It would have had a would have had one that covered the whole front corner of it once they changed the body style. Um, but the emblems that are missing, where it says four wheel drive on the side of the hood, those would have actually been 1950, true 1950 pieces. So this truck's kind of towards the end of the run of the leftovers. Um, from the, from the cow back though, the truck stayed pretty much the same. These trucks were built pretty much, they're pretty much in their, they didn't change much from 1947 to 1964 when they went out of production. Um, inside, I do still need to get working door handles on it. And the seat is not original. I put that in there, it's a 19, it's a S10 seat from a 90s S10, but it actually fits like it was made for it. Um, the speedometer and gauge cluster in the in the cab that is 1949 style stuff they were still using that to build out um it is three speed manual with reverse a high uh, four wheel drive in and out and high and low on the transfer case the truck did not have a bed on it when i got it it was a cabin chassis only the truck shows evidence where it was probably originally built as a flatbed truck. Um, it still has witness marks here for their factory flatbed mounting mounting points. Um, that was long gone. Those beds were made out of wood originally. So the fuel tank was junk, so I replaced the fuel tank. Um, the um, it has a tank in the rear end in it, which is capable of way more weight than I would ever want to put on the truck. It was technically rated as a one-ton truck in its day. Um, how you'd ever get it moving with 6,300 or 63 horsepower and how you'd ever get it stopped, I have no idea. 
truck was originally from way farther south than Door County. Um, apparently, there's a, I don't know if it'll come out on the video, there's a name of a farm on here, and it says Burlington, Wisconsin on the bottom. So Burlington's way south of where the truck ended up, so I'm not exactly sure how it ended up where it was at. Um, on the front of the truck, Typical Jeep stuff. Um, it looks like it looks like a Jeep. That's what they were aiming for. The later style 50, the 50 and a half truck, they started making them a little fancier because the trucks were quite a bit more expensive than a Jeep. This hood ornament and this front ornament here, this number four, that's a fairly rare piece. I found out later on. They only put these on the trucks for about six months before they discontinued it. Um, truck does still have its original flathead 134 cubic inch engine um, same engine that they used in the CJ2A and 3A Jeeps and a lot of other Jeep vehicles the Jeep station wagon at a time um, that's the other odd piece this is a holdover from 1949 because late 1950 models they actually went to overhead intake valves uh, that was a, plan, a change that was planned, but these trucks were built out with the uh, older style engine in them. Uh, everything under the hood is original, other than tune-up pieces and hoses, obviously. Um, rebuilt the original carburetor. The engine was stuck when I got it. Um, was able to free it up, was soaking it by tra with transmission fluid for a few weeks. Um, but it did break free finally. I did have to take the head off of it to do that, but I didn't have to, didn't have to do any valve job or anything on it. it um, took the oil pan off and cleaned it out to make sure it wasn't anything in it. This engine is exceptionally clean. The truck only shows 35,000 miles, so um, I would believe that it's fairly decent shape that way. Um, clutch and transmission work, got all the brakes working rebuilt all the brakes and rebuilt all the steering the steering box on these trucks is a trouble point um, they don't the box really isn't heavy enough these trucks were 1930s technology even when they were built this even when they were built this truck was outdated willies didn't have the money to to use modern stuff that was on the market for manufacturing at the time so they have antiquated steering and they have antiquated brakes even by 1949, 1950 standards. The, um, but at its given speeds that it's capable of, it's not too bad. This truck does have 538 to one gear ratio in the differential. Um, what that means is the drive shaft has to turn almost five and a half times to turn the wheels once. That's how it was able to, uh, that's how it's able to move all of its weight with only 63 horsepower is it's geared really low. The downside of that is it extremely limits its top road speed to about 45 mile an hour. Hopefully we can, I can come up with an overdrive to put in it to give it a little bit more road speed and not annoy traffic so much. But um, The truck's a blast to drive. It drives great now with, uh, with all the steering rebuilt and I built a flatbed for it. Um, out of steel tube, uh, box tubing. The bed is going to end up covered in railroad, uh, in railroad bridge timbers that I've, a friend of mine is going to cut down to plank size, five quarter decking. And then the truck is going to end up with a 1950s record boom, uh, built by Hubbard Manufacturing right here in, in Randolph County, um, farmland, Indiana. So, the truck's maintained. I've tried to keep it mostly stock. Um, performance has its place, but I like old stuff too. It reminds us where we came from and kind of reminds you to take things a little bit slower. Um, there will be a few things updated on the International that I haven't done on this truck. So this truck is still running six volt system, uh, mainly because everything works and this engine doesn't turn very hard. The International, I'm not a giant fan of six volt on larger engines because it, it is not to say it can't be done but it's hard to make, keep them working this thing with very low compression and low horsepower this engine starts pretty easy even on six volt um, it hadn't been run in probably a month and a half 
today and start it up on its own. So without having to dump it or charge it in any way. So hopefully we can get the bed made, uh, the rest of the decking made for the bed and get the boom on it fairly soon. Um, I'd like to see it in its somewhat final form. I've still got a few other things I want to do to it. We need to get a steering wheel done. Um, and I need to get the side windows working. The side windows currently don't work. The regulator's broken inside the door. Um, I did have glass made for the windshield in the back. The, the windows were all busted out of it when I got it. So that's, uh, that's been slowly repaired. I did have the glass company make. This glass is made. Has to be made in two pieces due to the way the cab is made. So I had them actually glue the glass in the center and do away with the center bar mainly because my center bar was broken um, and wasn't really reusable so, that's the 1950s Willys truck so why don't you put in the comments of what you've seen and uh, what you've seen on your vacation travels and if you and if you've ever been to Door County um, it's a great place to visit and uh, anyway remember to subscribe and and hit the like button and the notification bell for new videos. Thanks.